My name is Galit Cavendish and I am the maker of Loveline Baskets. Loveline Baskets came about in a way that I never expected. I, I never thought that I would be making baskets. I am a professional chef by trade. Cooking professionally was my main source of creativity for so many years. But on the side, I also explored fiber arts, sewing, pottery. I did pottery for over 10 years. And so for me, the way I move through my life is very much a creative process. I'm very family oriented. So when Alan was born, I had a a very difficult labor and he suffered oxygen loss and subsequently he passed away on his eighth day of life. I, I, I couldn't even think, I couldn't even breathe for a very long time. And I went to my sister's house one day and on her table she had a rope basket and it was dyed yellow from turmeric. And I remember saying, Abigail, that basket is gorgeous. Where'd you buy it? And she said, I made it. I went to the hardware store. I went to the health food store. I came home. I made a huge pot of turmeric dye. I dyed some cord. I dried it and I sewed a basket. And then I sewed another and another and another. And within a couple of months, I, I must have had a hundred baskets in my room. I realized that it was exactly what I needed to be able to start the process of grieving. I was sewing in a circle, which was very symbolic to the circle of life for me. I was sewing cord, which was very much my thinking, very much like the placenta with the umbilical cord and the cord to life. And um, it helped. And I started picking up culled beets and carrots and spinach and I would juice them and I would make these huge pots of dye because it was very much like cooking, time and temperature and color and I would dye the cord and sew these baskets and that is how really Love Lime Baskets started. I have pearl gray slate goldenrod. I use 100% natural matter root and that creates different shades of pinks. You can see the difference depending on when I put it in in the dye pot. When someone orders a basket based off of a color that I have featured on my website or on an Instagram feed, it needs to match. So it's actually quite tricky sometimes to create a dye color that every time comes out the same. So when I get a new dye or if I'm trying to come up with a new color, I keep a notebook of how much dye powder I use in the water or how much turmeric I put in or viburnum berries, whatever it is that I'm working with, I keep a recipe for the dyes to try to create a consistent um, color. But even still, there's always um, slight variation in color. Yeah. <laughs> And that's how all my cord gets unwound, all the time, but this is a gathering mat. I love to pull over on the side of the road and I love to harvest flowers and rhubarb and so I just lay it flat. I put my items in it and I lift and I carry. And if I have a lot, I've got two handles or I can wear it over if I'm walking down the street. And I use this all the time. I do a lot of product testing. This is a harvest tote. I brought it to the market yesterday actually and just carried a couple of loaves of bread in it, but I'll use it to harvest peas, beans, herbs. And it's just something nice to carry in the garden. This is, was also designed as a market bag. It has a very large opening to it. I keep it as a round bottom rather than an oval. So I create a basket that can be freestanding or that can be carried as a bag. This basket is named Delphinium. And it's one of my most long-standing popular baskets. It's a simple, 
bucket style basket with leather handles. It is great for hats and scarves right by the front door. It's wonderful for blocks. It's good for socks in your closet. I have made them and kept them in my kitchen and filled it with onions and shallots and maybe a couple winter squash and kept it on my countertop. And I love being able to hide, hide things. This basket also, so it has a lid and it also has handles. So you can carry it as a tote mm -hmm. and then come home and put the lid on it. So this is my machine. I love my sewing machine. This is my little guy. He's with me all the time, my little magnet. My special reach for the stars. That was given to me from another lost mom a couple years after Alan had died. I've already been sewing this morning, so I know that my machine is oiled, I know it's clean, I know that my setting is accurate, and it's all set up with an industrial sewing machine. It's a little bit different than a domestic machine. You have to make sure that you, you oil it. And domestic machines, you can't lift up to clean, but with this, what is so wonderful is I can really do my own maintenance on it. And you come and you look underneath and actually it needs a little bit of oil. So there's three compartments that get oil. One, oils, keeps all of this well oiled. This goes into, this whole chamber is full of oil. Then it gets oil up here to keep this whole part of the machine oiled. It's a very oily process. I always keep a bucket of rags near me because I like to make sure that it's all clean. I use a couple of different tools to clean my machine. I use compressed air to spray out all the dust. It's a very dusty process. I WD-40 the inside. This is my bobbin. This is my bobbin casing right here. This is a super important part to keep clean. Um, and free of dust. And since it is a very dusty process, I clean my machine, constantly cleaning my machine. It's heavy. This part is like 80 pounds. And I am creating the double strand of cord that I'll be using to make a striped bowl. And it's really, really, really important that I get to the middle of each piece of cord and it zigzags over the center because that is what holds the basket together. Um, I use a very heavy duty needle in this machine so that it can go through. These are the needles that I use, they're fantastic. And I change my needle frequently. I use my left hand as pressure and my right hand to guide the glue so that I stay right in the middle. I can hear that it's time to change my bobbin. Now with this machine, it has a bobbin that's underneath. So I take the bobbin out. Bobbin casing, this is my bobbin. I use an extra large bobbin. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. What are you doing? I know, but I'm going to work for... Oh, is Papa watching you? No. Yeah, no, he's not, huh? Okay. Okay. And then we're right back at it. And I'm sewing. I'll slow it down so you can see. My zigzag stitch is going right over the blue and the white to create a secure base for the basket. This machine sews faster than I could ever possibly sew. Um, and so I set a lock on the speed because if I go too fast, it, it pulls pulls me off of my course 
and it can also break the thread. This is bonded nylon. I love my thread. So when creating a new color with a dye, I try to match it to what cord. I mean, match the cord to what color thread I can get. And each basket is built a little differently. For this, I'm going to start bringing it up on an angle. And I'm going to create just a bowl shaped basket. And then to finish my baskets, I always, even though I've done that, I like to do a very tight stitch. Place. Go back to make sure everything is snipped. And then you have a simple striped bowl. Love line baskets really means a lot to me. And my family means a lot to me. And it's something that I can do from home. My girls see the value of hard work. And making my baskets allows me to have that uninterrupted time where my love can flow through me and, and, and right back up. You know, it's, it's just this, this circle. It's like my love connection. <laughs> it's the line and it's more than a lifeline. It was a lifeline and now it's, it's a love line.